most important apocalypse in the Judeo-Christian tradition is the Revelation to John, the last book in the Christian Bible, uh, which describes, amongst other things, the destruction of the world. There's this idea that there is um, uh, a secret knowledge of the future out there that's hidden. You would get a prophet or a priest and they would be able to access the future. Come the 20th century, scientists are actually better at talking about the future than a lot of religious figures are. So it becomes possible to talk about a scientific apocalypse. That is, now the scientists can read the future and figure out what the end is going to look like. Inside Science. Part of what's going on is that the ideas of uh, the apocalypse and apocalypticism in general have been profoundly influential on America. One of the most important divisions is between apocalypses that you can do something about and apocalypses that you can't. Scientific apocalypses are divided the same sort of way. Normal sort of American Protestant apocalypticism says uh, the end is coming, so repent, but there's nothing you can do to prevent uh, the end of the world. Whereas scientific apocalypses usually say, uh, a bad thing is going to happen unless we do this. So if you're a scientist and you want to get across a particular idea, it turns out that apocalypticism is a useful framework for doing these sorts of things. Tonight I'll be talking about theories of asteroid impacts and nuclear winter. And one of the things I find interesting is that both of these depart from the realization in the 1980s that the dinosaurs were killed by um, a celestial impact. Nowadays, the government funds research to prevent an asteroid from hitting us. So that's a sense in which the asteroid impact scientists were successful. That is, people took their apocalyptic warnings seriously. But it took a very long time, essentially took 20 years to, uh, to get people to take it seriously. There are many different kinds of apocalypses, right? So you can have um, fire and brimstone style from the sky. Uh, and then once the scientists get talking about things, we have things like asteroid impacts and nuclear winter and global pandemics and environmental destruction and resource depletion. And all of these look quite different. In order to be persuasive, scientists can't be too apocalyptic, that is, they have to present themselves as being disinterested experts. They have to look like they don't have any kind of political agenda. Apocalypticism gives them categories that they use to talk and to explain the world. And also, it's a mode to which people are receptive. So if you're a scientist and you want to get across a particular idea, it turns out that apocalypticism is a useful framework for doing these sorts of things. The effective scientific apocalypticist will warn you that it's imminent, but not very imminent, and then give you a list of actions you should take to prevent that from happening. So the scientific apocalypses tend to be more calls to action rather than telling people to lead their lives in different ways. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.